So now we're going to talk about how we can use power series or polynomials to represent functions like trig functions and exponential functions and logarithms. And we're going to call the power series in this form a Taylor series or a Taylor polynomial. And the idea of a Taylor polynomial is that we want to build a polynomial that matches the behavior of some function, some non-polynomial function, and its derivatives at a particular point. Just like a lot of the other things we do, we're going to start by doing this at zero because zero is a lot easier to work with than some other stuff. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this power series here and we're going to match up the value of the power series for, for each of its derivatives to the value of the derivative of the function itself or the higher order derivatives. And so let's just take a look at how we're going to do this. If we look at the power series, this is just a general power series here, given by this formula. We have the constant term, and then the linear term, and then the quadratic term, and so on. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the derivative of this polynomial over and over and over again. And so the first derivative, we take the derivative term by term, and the derivative of the constant term is going to drop out. The derivative of the linear term is just going to be a to the 1, using the power rule. The derivative of the second term, or the third term, sorry, is going to be 2a sub 2 times x, using the power rule. And using the power rule, we get the derivative of this power series term by term. And this is going to continue on forever, since this is an infinite power series. Then we can take the second derivative by taking the derivative of the first derivative. Again, the constant term falls out, so we get 2a sub 2 first. Then we take the derivative of this term, and we get 2 times 3 times a sub 3 times x. And we write it like that. We'll write these numbers in descending order. We could multiply it out, but we'll see why later that it's a good idea not to. It's actually going to end up being cleaner if we don't yet. And the next term, if we would take the derivative of it, I know it's not here, but if we would take the derivative of the next term, we would get this, and that would continue. And we could do it again. We could take the derivative of the second derivative to get the third derivative, and we get something that looks like this. And we could do it again. In the nth derivative, really the only term that matters is going to be this constant term, but we could continue taking the derivative term by term and we'd get something that looks like this. These terms don't matter, except that when we take the n plus first derivative, the next derivative, it's, it does matter that this right here is going to turn into a term that's going to look like this. So now since we want the behavior of our power series, to be like the behavior of our function, f, what we're going to do is, I'm sorry, since we want it to behave like the function at 0, what we're going to do is we're going to plug 0 into the power series itself, and then the derivative, and the second derivative, and the third derivative, and so on. So when we put 0 in here, all of the terms with an x in it is going to disappear. Then we plug 0 into the derivative, and same thing, these terms with the x's in them will disappear. So these terms are going to disappear, and all we have left is the a sub 1. And when we plug 0 into the second derivative, again, any term with an x in it will disappear, and all we have left is the constant term, which is going to be 2 times a sub 2. And we can continue this forever. And we start to notice a pattern here. The third derivative evaluated at 0 is going to be 3 times 2 times a sub 3. The fourth derivative evaluated at 0 would be 4 times 3 times 2 times a sub 4. And what we end up with is a factorial. So the nth derivative of our power series evaluated at 0 is going to be n factorial times a sub n. So now since our goal is to make the derivatives of our power series match the derivatives of our function, at x equals 0 on all orders, or at least as many practical orders as, as we can, what we're going to do is we're going to set our p of 0 equal to f of 0. And so a sub 0 in our power series is just going to be the value of the function at 0. And we're going to set our first derivative at 0 equal to the first derivative of the function at 0. And so that means that a sub 1 in our power series is going to be the first derivative evaluated at 0. And likewise, we can set 
the second derivative of our power function, our power series, equal to the second derivative of the function. And here we would actually have to do a little bit of work, a little bit of math to solve for a sub 2. All we do is divide both sides by 2 and we get that. And we can do it again here. So the third derivative at 0, we end up getting a sub 3 is equal to the third derivative evaluated at 0 divided by 3 factorial. And the general term is really the most interesting one here. This is where the formula comes from. So a sub n is going to be the nth derivative of f evaluated at 0 divided by n factorial. And what this does is it gives us a way of building a power series, which we're going to call a Taylor series or a Taylor polynomial, centered at x equals 0. And this power series here is going to closely represent the function that we are trying to approximate. So this equation gives us a way of representing functions that are not polynomial functions as a polynomial, which is much easier to work with when taking derivatives and integrals and approximating values of functions without machines.